I'm reading the Bible the whole time to them right there. And they get up and they'll walk out. You know, sometimes I'll see them, watch them in the back with a kind of a smile because, you know, just all knowing, although I'm reading something out of the Bible, they don't know that they're locked into a position, that they have a veil in front of their eyes, that they're ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They are part of the crowd that will not endure sound doctrine, but they're going to want to have their ears tickled, and they're going to accumulate with them teachers in accordance to their own desires and lifestyle in this world. And when you find teachers and doctrines of this nature, then you can just turn your ears away from the truth. You can justify it and, 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 and never have to understand anything about the powers of darkness that are de destroying you. And uh, this is what's happened to today. <clears throat> People had rather hear peace and safety as they hear is something about discipline. Uh, they don't want to receive discipline. Uh, and if you don't receive discipline, you're not receiving sanctification. You're not being sanctified. Your know, heart's not being purified. And uh, I want you to remember something, folks. And once again, let's look at what we're, where we've been. Look at where you've been walking and compare it with what your Bible says. Uh, Hebrews 12, 8 says, If you're without discipline... I want to say this again. If you are without discipline, this discipline we've been talking, which means to put to death the deeds and sins of the flesh, of which all, which it means all sons, have become partakers. That's all the sons of God. They're partakers of this discipline. Discipline is being letting someone else control your life, uh, such in this case it's Jesus and the Spirit of God. And if you're, it, and, and if you're without this discipline, which the Son of God are partakers, then you are illegitimate children. You're illegitimate children, and you're not sons. See, folks, because we have watched the crowds, we have watched what we thought to be, uh, you know, all the smart people go a certain way. See, the, the wisdom of this world is one thing, and that's what people in the form of God is so walking in. But the wisdom of God is so far beyond that, folks. And when you look toward men and their intellect for wisdom, and you don't, you're not really seeking God's wisdom. You're putting your trust in men because the, the wisdom of this world, what's in the church today, does not see and understand what's going on in the spiritual realm. As a matter of fact, see, if they knew what's on, going on in the spiritual realm, then they'd, then they'd know the fear of God. And, you know, the fear of God is a beginning of wisdom. And see, if you don't even have the fear of God, you haven't even received enough wisdom to even understand the judgment and what's going on right now. And so my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And folks, too, they, we're living in the great falling away right now. The trumpet is blowing. The Lord is saying, wake up. I want you to see and hear where I'm pointing you to. Uh, folks, I don't need any followers. I don't want any followers. I'm telling you to wake up and see what your Bible said, and let the Word of God tear it. If, if men have been your idols, you're trusting them more than you are. Let, let the Word of God tear it down. If you're, if you're putting your trust in some religious structure that doesn't conform you to godliness, let the Word tear it down and get out of there. And, and, and you say, well, where do you go? Well, I'm telling you what, if you're led by the Spirit of God, you'll know where to go to. If you're somewhere where they're loving them, and, 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 and where they come the Lord, the whole truth, they put the Word of God before they do any kind of traditions and everything. We're all working in some things. And I want to encourage you that, uh, brother, there are people that's called shepherds around. It's some of the godliest and most precious people they are anywhere. There are not a whole lot of them. And it's easy to see which ones are and which ones aren't. But, brother, when you get somebody, you get behind them and love them, and, and pray for them. But in the meantime, if you, if you don't have some uh, uh, fellowship or something you can go to where they're really per being perfected in love and come to the Lord of the whole heart, you know, why don't you just sit down at your kitchen su table some Sunday instead of reporting to some bu building and say, Lord, I'll, if, if, if I'm, I'm on the right trail just seeking you, I want to see your presence come in our family right here on this this, this day right here at this kitchen table, and you get out your Bible right there, and you see if you don't see God show up like you've never seen Him show up before. And, and for a change, you can be walking away from that kitchen table talking about what God's done instead of how many numbers we had and what kind of fleshly achievements we've accomplished this past week and these kind of things if that happens to be where you're, where you're walking at and living at. Because, see, a form of godliness gives us a false security 
rather than teach you to receive discipline and overcome the sins of the flesh so that you become, become righteous and holy. Now, I want you to know the exact opposite of a form of godliness is sanctification, which is what we've been talking about, folks. Folks, I, you know, I really hope today's uh, program has kind of really, you know, just going back over this. I hope you haven't minded this and uh, some of these things or most of these things you've already seen, but I, but I hope this has just kind of uh, jogged you or something because when, folks, when we start dealing with something that we have to unlearn, that we've learned for 20 years or something like that and have to deal with that, I mean, it takes a little reminding. It's just kind of going over and over. You know, sometimes I have tied things together in the Word of God, and people, you know, people are so locked in their positions. That to me, it's so, uh, in their traditions, rather, it's so clear and plain to me, but I'll see them sit there and look at me like a cave at a new gate or something like that. And so I, then I, I know, man, I just have to come back, and I just go over it. I just kind of go over it. And I want you to know, folks, we're headed for a different place. We're headed for a place about the last days. And if when we can get this and get this part clear, it's, it's so plain and, it, and it's so clear uh, about the day of the Lord, about the mark of the beast and the mark of the Lord. And, uh, and I'm going to tell you once again, you don't have to be some Far Eastern expert to understand it. I want to tell you the what... When you come to the Lord of the whole heart, when you're repenting from traditions and the idols of men, the world, the things in the world, I want you to know that the Lord is, is I mean, he's, he'll, he'll, his word will just get all over you when you get in the word. I want you to remember something, folks. This is what the gospel is all about. Jesus told us in John 15, this is my commandment, that you love one another just as I've loved you. Let me ask you something, beloved. How is that possible in the form of godliness that most of the church is walking in today? How is that possible where they establish their own righteousness and, they, and, and, and defend people who have no scriptural evidence of salvation? How, how, that when they come in, they make a commitment to a structure and men. And men are programmed to follow after this form of godliness and these doctrines that do not conform you to godliness. They're fulfilling selfish ambition. They, they have their visions and dreams and they're just leading you to be so busy. And you come in and have you to get so excited about numbers, nickels, noses, buildings, and things of that nature. While the powers of darkness are slowly like a moth and, and like a rottenness. They're just a slow deterioration there. Folks, Jesus came to fulfill the law in us. It's, I want you to remember something. Salvation is being saved from the wrath of God. The Lord Jesus Christ said, lay down your life and love one another as, as, as I've loved you. And then when we do this, we fulfill the law of God. We have been sanctified. We have love from a pure heart. Is there anything wrong with that? Lo loving, your, loving the Lord with all your heart and your neighbors yourself. Why should we resist anything like that? It's clear in the Word right here, folks. But when you're looking at it through tunnel vision, you know it's, it's hard to see. I want you to meditate on these things right here. I want you to join with me tomorrow. We'll just have a little wrap-up. We're going to get into it about the powers of darkness. I sure do love you. God bless you, and I'll see you tomorrow.